For all its beauty and splendor, the wilderness can be a cruel teacher. A tsunami can move at speeds of 600 miles per hour across the open ocean and smash into land with waves as high as 100 feet or more. The debris-filled water can cause great damage and loss of life within minutes. Click the subscribe and like buttons. This is Outdoor Disasters. Hunga Tonga Hunga Haapai is a submarine volcano in the Kermadec Tonga Ridge in the South Pacific, a ridge formed by the convergent boundary where the Pacific Plate is subducted by the Indo-Australian Plate, forming a long volcanic and island chain. Hunga Tonga Hunga Haapai volcano lies almost completely underwater, with the exception of two small volcanic islands nearby. In December 2021, the volcano awoke in a series of tantrums that turned into outright turmoil on January 15, 2022, the peak unleashed a blast so loud it was heard in Alaska, some 6,000 miles away. At approximately 7 p.m., a wave of over 20 feet high hit the shore of the small Tongan island of Atata. This was the result of the eruption underwater off the coast. The force of the eruption was more than 500 times that of the Hiroshima bomb dropped in World War II. For Lisala Folau, the will to survive would be one of the greatest stories ever told. Early in the morning, the volcano produced a colossal explosion that triggered a 7.4 magnitude earthquake. A shockwave radiated outward at close to the speed of sound, eventually traveling halfway around the world, and is listed as the loudest sound ever recorded. A tsunami quickly followed that hit Tongatapu, the main island in Tonga, and home to the capital, Nukualofa. Communications were knocked out, as the streets began to flood and people fled for their lives. Lisala Folau lived on the small island of Atata, which is about five miles northwest of Tonga's capital. When I heard the loud bangs, I went outside my house. I thought it was thunder at first, but then I heard people chattering about getting to higher ground, Folau said. Atata boasts just one village with a population of about 70 people. The island's interior consists of high cliffs which can provide protection against the tsunami. Not long after the eruption Saturday night, Mr. Folau's older brother managed to alert him that a tsunami wave was coming. At this time, Folau was painting in his house. Formerly a carpenter, Folau was disabled, causing both his legs to not properly function. I believe a baby can walk faster than I, Lisala stated. With a nephew, Lisala's brother helped him climb a tree. As waves crashed through the house, the Folau brothers and Lisala's niece, Elisiva, and nephew were in a tree and survived the first wave. During a lull in the waves, Lisala's brother told him and Elisiva to stay on the tree while he and his nephew sought help from the houses on higher grounds and to find some youth to help him to that area. Unbeknownst to the impending danger, his niece jumped down from the tree and attempted to get help as well and followed them. When she arrived, the nephew was tasked to assist an elderly woman while she was tasked to go back and assist Lisala to higher ground. It was a hard task for Elisiva, as it was getting cold and Lisala could barely move. At this time, it was around 7 p.m., Lisala's older brother was running, yelling to them that a big wave was coming. As Lisala turned and looked at the wave, it was a bigger wave than the previous 20-foot wave. When the wave break on land just below us, my niece Elisiva and I had nothing to hold on to, and we were swept out to sea, Lisala stated. Out into the dark, the pair floated out to sea, calling out to each other. But it was dark, and neither was visible. He eventually couldn't hear his niece, though he did hear his son calling for him from shore. The truth is, no son can abandon his father, Folau said. But for me, as a father, I kept my silence, for if I answered him, he would have jumped in and tried to rescue me. But I understand the tough situation, and I thought if the worst comes, it only comes to me. He continued floating, being bashed by large waves. His mindset was to grab onto a tree or anything that could help him survive, and he found one. This tree was Lisala's lifeline for the night in the open ocean. Folau spent the entire night struggling to stay afloat. If there was any silver lining from this devastating eruption, volcanic ash rain heated the ocean significantly, keeping him warm. He felt ash falling and his hair was full of ash and rocks. Staying afloat was the biggest ordeal, and Lisala was struggling. But his will to live distracted any feeling of thirst or exhaustion. Lisala wanted to live and find his family. 
The current carried Lasala to a tiny atoll called Tokatok, an uninhabited island around 7 a.m. Sunday morning. This island was less than three acres. It was almost bare. The tsunami stripped away most of the trees. He saw a police patrol boat heading to Atata, prompting him to grab a rag and wave toward it. He remained unseen. He was beside himself not knowing what happened to his family. This gave him a burst of energy and decided to swim to the island of Poloa. He began his swim, back into the ocean at about 10 a.m. Miraculously, Lisala made the eight-hour, four-mile swim to the island. When he made it ashore, called and yelled for help, but there was no one there. This was another uninhabited island. He was worried about his niece at this time and looked frantically for any sign of her. He felt another burst of energy as his concerns went to his sister with diabetes and his youngest daughter who has heart problems. Most would stay put and wait in hope for rescue. In a survival situation of this nature, this would be the correct and best decision to stay alive. But Lisala wasn't worried about the danger he is going to put himself in. He made the decision to swim to Sopu, on the western edge of Nuku'alofa, on the main island of Tongatapu, a 1.5-mile swim. All these thoughts were racing in my mind, and what was the point now? I have survived, but what about them, he said. This drove me to get to Sopu. So back in the ocean, Lisala Folau went for a grueling swim, fueled by love, grief, and the will to survive and see his family again. At about 9 p.m., after more than five miles of swimming in the open ocean, Lisala Folau, the 57-year-old disabled grandfather, made it to the main island, an incredible feat an Olympic swimmer would struggle with. He swam ashore on a beach near a home in Sopu. He later found a piece of timber he used as a walking stick, eventually flagging down a vehicle and explaining that he was washed away from Atata and was trying to contact his family. The driver of the vehicle took Folau to his village and told them who he was. The people of the village were stunned. Later on, Folau arrived at a relative's home on Tongatapu, where his evacuated family was staying. They were overjoyed to see him alive. They were planning his funeral and had told his wife, who was in Australia at the time he was dead. My family stayed up all night singing hymns because I had miraculously survived, Lisala stated. When the story of Lisala Folau reached the news, his incredible story captivated people the world over. His story went viral on social media, hailing him as a real-life Aquaman. Lisala would later give an interview to recount the miraculous survival story. The scariest part to me during the ordeal was when the waves took me from land into the sea, he said. What came into my mind when I was helpless at sea were two things. One is that I still had faith in God. Two is my family. I thought about my family and what they were thinking. They probably assumed I was dead. I have faith in my God and I left everything to the will of God and his plans for me. And if he wants me to live to see my family, it is up to him. I give praise and glory to God because he gave me the opportunity to see my family again. The people of Atata were relocated and resettled to the main island of Tongatapu as their island was devastated by tsunami waves caused by the eruption and remained vulnerable to future tsunamis and cyclones. Unfortunately, there's not much information on the death toll on Atata or if all of Lisala's family survived. The settlement for the Atata people opened on December 20, 2022. Many of the people of Atata lived a simple subsistence lifestyle, reliant on their renowned fishing skills. But now, they must adapt to a new life on the main island. This adjustment has been challenging for some. I really want to go back, Lisala Folau said, but I know it's a foolish thing to do because I would be putting myself and my family at risk. In a traumatic event, you must surrender without giving in, fully accept the reality of the situation in all its horror, and never give up the will to survive. That allows you to quickly adapt to the situation and dedicate yourself to the present moment, rather than wallow in denial. We often do not get to choose what happens to us, we only get to choose how we respond. Being swept out to sea would definitely be a cause for panic, but a cooler head increases your chances of survival. Focus on what you can do, not what you can't do. Utilize the resources you do have. If you're in cold water, you have a good chance of getting hypothermia. So pull your knees to your chest and hold them to retain heat. While your chances of survival in an open ocean are slim, the will to survive knows no bounds. Useful tips so you can survive an outdoor disaster.